Active packaging pre <laughs> come no a precision what is wrong with me hi everyone welcome to another video and if you're new here hi my name is Carmel and on this channel we talk about all things makeup and beauty and today we are talking liquid blush if you know me at all, you will know that I'm a little bit obsessed with liquid blush. And quite recently, two of the biggest luxury brands have released their own liquid blushes. So we have Armani Luminous Silk Cheek Tint, and we also have the Hourglass Unreal Liquid Blush. The purpose of this video is to try and help you choose which of these luxury blushes is best for you. And at some point in the video, I will include shade swatches against some of the other liquid blushes that I have. So that might help you in choosing which shade you think might suit you best. So if testing and comparing luxury liquid blush sounds like something that you might be interested in, please do keep on watching. Today we are taking a look at the Armani Luminous Silk Cheek Tint. And I have this in the shade 62, which is Delicate Mauve. Delicate Mauve is described as a dusty rose and you can pick this up for around about £36 or $39. So let's take a quick look at the claims of this blush. So it claims to be an up to 12 hour skin fusing liquid blush for just pinched cheeks. It has a watercolour transformative technology inspired by the Armani lipstick formulation, which combines intense colour with lightweight buildability. It has a water in oil emulsion to create a vibrant color payoff and it has a thin film that seamlessly fuses with your skin. And this blush comes in six vibrant shades. So we'll just take a look at the packaging again. It has that typical Armani packaging, glass bottle and typical doe foot applicator. And with the Armani, you get 12 mil of product. The only annoying thing I don't like about this is, look, I just closed it up there. The Armani logo is now at the back. So you need to figure out a way to close it up. And I think it's where if you start by closing the lid with the logo visible at the front, and then when you twist it, it should end up at the front. I think that's what's worked for me anyway. With an applicator like this, you can go in directly on your cheek. And being completely honest, I don't like going in directly on my cheek. However, I actually do not mind going in on my cheek with this blush because I find it, although it's pigmented, it is one of the most blendable formulas I've ever used. So I'll show you both ways today, just so that you can see that it's fine both ways. In relation to what products I have on my face, I literally just have foundation and concealer on. Obviously my eyes are done, but I don't have any bronzer on because I don't want to affect how the blush looks. I have just used a very natural foundation today, which is the Chanel number no. one. I have this in the shade B40, which is definitely my summer shade. It's a very, very skin-like foundation, so I don't feel like it will interfere with the blush at all. I will stick to the very same makeup for both days. So I'll go ahead and I will pop some onto the back of my hand. I am going to go in with my Refa O4 brush. So just tapping in and just coating the bristles. And don't worry if when you go into your cheek, it feels like there's a lot on there because it's very, very easy to work out. It really is. So just tapping it onto the skin. See how easy that was? And this definitely does have a very, very buildable formula. I would say definitely more buildable than the hourglass in my experience and in my opinion. And I want to put a bit more on than usual for you to see. So there we are, that's Delicate Mauve. So I would say it's definitely more than a sheer wash of colour. I think it just packs a little bit more punch than what the Hourglass does. The Hourglass does feel very serum-y. However, although it doesn't feel as serum as the Hourglass, it definitely becomes one with the skin like the Hourglass does. It doesn't sit on top, definitely gels with your skin. For the other side, I will dot it onto the cheek so that you can see what it looks like. We'll just do three little dots. Start with less and then build it up. 
and again just tapping. There we are, applied to both sides of the face now. And this is going to sound a little bit confusing, but it doesn't powder down, but I definitely feel like it does set down on the skin. And although it does have some natural luminosity to it, I don't feel like it is very glowy. So I always like to set my under eyes, but I always prefer to do it after I've done my blush. It really is personal preference. And the only reason that I do my eyes last is because when I do my blush, because I do like to bring it up quite high, inevitably, some of it is going to end up under my eyes. So I just like to take the concealer brush that I used that day and just tap under my eyes just to pat any creases out and blend any blush that may have come up a bit too high. I'm then going to take my powder, which I'll be using the Givenchy, and then I'm just going to powder the under eyes. So there we go with everything powdered and set. So the next footage you will see will be me in the daylight. And then I will insert footage of the end of the day after a full day wear test. And then we will move on to the application and the review of the Hourglass blush. So let's head on to the daylight footage. the turn of the Hourglass Unreal Liquid Blush. I have this in the shade Scene, which is described as a soft, warm pink. So you can pick this up for £38 or $36. And you may have noticed it's quite small, isn't it? It's quite diddy. That's because it is, it is quite small. Now I am going to break down the similarities and differences later on. I know that the packaging is different, but you do get less product with the Hourglass. So with the Hourglass, you get 10.3 mil, and with the Armani, you get 12 mil. The Hourglass is slightly more expensive. Consistency-wise, they are very, very different. The Hourglass is much more liquidy, much more lightweight. So let's have a look at some of the claims of this blush. So the Hourglass comes in seven shades, and it is a liquid blush that visibly plumps with hydration and delivers unreal, buildable color for a natural finish that stays in place for up to 12 hours. The innovative packaging features a precision dropper that allows you to customize your desired look from a soft wash of color to a vibrant flush. So it does claim to visibly firm the skin. It does contain hyaluronic acid for hydration and it claims to give a lightweight but buildable color. So as I've already demonstrated, this comes in a completely different applicator to what the Armani does. There is a little dropper there. In order to dispense the product, you need to press this little dispenser button, or whatever you wanna call it at the bottom, you press it once and it will dispense one drop of product. So make sure before you dispense the product that you do give it a shake make sure that you have the cap on when you're shaking it up because that could get messy. Now, in terms of what I've got on my face already, I just have obviously my eyes, but complexion wise, I only have foundation and concealer on, which is the Chanel number no. one. But we'll just dispense one drop of product. That is one drop of product. Now it might not look it there, but it's very, very, I would say serum-like in texture. So I'm going to apply the blush with my Refa 04. I'm going to coat the bristles on the back of my hand first before I pop it on. You can go in straight on your cheek if you want. I think that that would be very hard to control. I would always advise popping liquid blush onto your hand before you pop it on your cheek. Just because it will give you more control and it will help to warm up that product just a little bit before it goes onto your cheek. So lightweight. And I do think that this 
shade that I have seen is not as pigmented as some of the others because I've seen some people use one drop for both sides of their face. I can't do that with this shade. I have to use two drops. With some of the deeper shades, I think you could definitely get away with just one drop. So this blush does claim to give a natural finish and I would 100% agree with that. I think it is a very natural looking blush. It definitely sinks down into the skin rather than sitting on top. And it's really nice because it's not overly pigmented. So that's how it's looking on the skin. I think you can actually see how hydrating it is on the skin. It definitely looks like it has given the skin a boost of hydration and plumpness. I think my skin just looks really, really healthy when I wear this. And it's very, very easy to use. I know some people are absolutely terrified of liquid blush, but this is a liquid blush that is so user-friendly because it kind of blends itself. So I always do my blush and then I will powder my under eye. So I will do that now so that you can see how different it would look with a little bit of powder in the area. So I'm just taking my Givenchy. So inevitably, when you powder around your eyes, you're always going to bring down that glow a little bit. I know some people do worry about blushes being too overly glowy. Now, I do think that this is more of a glowy blush, but I wouldn't call it dewy, and it's most definitely not greasy. And I think that for more mature skin like mine, I think this is absolutely beautiful. It's perfect for those low makeup days or even no makeup days because you can really, really share this blush out. We're back at the end to really break down the similarities and differences and hopefully I can help you choose which blush you think is the best one for you. So I will see you in a little bit. I think now we need to break down the similarities and differences. In the one thing that I will say to you, you don't need both. And just for your information, I decided to wear two of the blushes today. So on this side, we have the Armani. And on this side, we have the Hourglass. In regards to the formula, I would definitely say that this Hourglass formula is definitely more skincare-like. It definitely feels hydrating, it soaks into your skin. I do think that boils down to one of the major ingredients, which is hyaluronic acid. You can definitely tell that this is skincare infused. On the other hand, you have the Armani, which also does sink straight into the skin. It doesn't sit on top. It definitely feels very smooth and beautiful on the skin. Does it feel as hydrating as the Hourglass? No, it doesn't. Although it doesn't have as many skincare ingredients as the Hourglass, it does have something called their Microfill technology, which allows super blendability and allows the product to seamlessly blend in with the skin, avoiding any patchiness. And I think that is the one similarity that these blushes definitely do have. They both blend beautifully and seamlessly. You barely have to touch your face. I think they both definitely do have that natural and radiant finish. However, I would say this is the hourglass side. If you just look at them both next to each other, the hourglass side definitely has a little bit more glow, just a touch. I don't think you can tell them miles apart, but I do think that the Armani does set down just a little bit more, not to a powdery finish, but it definitely does set down on the skin. Whereas I feel like the hourglass remains looking glowy and radiant throughout the day. I have put more blush on today than what I usually would. As for buildability, I was actually surprised at how much 
pigment you do get from the hourglass. I have quite a subtle shade in scene. I do find that with this color, I do have to build it up a little bit. It depends what you're going for. I would happily wear a touch of this with very little makeup on and even no foundation just to give me, me a little bit of color, a little bit of a flush to the cheeks. The Armani, you can get a higher payoff, a higher level of coverage right off the bat. And I think, for example, in the daytime, they're both beautiful blushes. But if I was going to an event, if I was going somewhere where I needed something to have a little bit more punch, I would probably go for the Armani. Longevity, I think is a tricky one. So I did demonstrate some footage of the wear test and I think they both perform really well. I'm going to show a little bit more footage for you now from another wear test with the Armani because I felt like I kind of pushed the Armani to its limits because the day that I wore that, I actually took my kids to an adventure center. Yes an adventure center and it was very hot. It was very sweaty. I was out in the sun pretty much all day and my makeup had very much diminished by the end of it. I decided to put it to another test just so that you could see how it looked at the end of a normal day. So here's a little bit of footage at the end of a normal 10 hour day and the longevity of this really does impress me. As I said previously, once it sets down, it stays there and it doesn't budge. I think with the hourglass, although it does still stick around, I definitely did notice a bit more fading with the hourglass. And I think that is to be expected. You know, let's bear in mind, blush is probably one of the first things on your face to wear away during the day. And especially when it comes to liquid blush. So I think that just to be fair to the hourglass, you can still see it at the end of the day, but I did notice more wearing in the hourglass than I did in the Armani. So as I mentioned, when I was applying the hourglass, you do get slightly less product with the hourglass. And it got me thinking about how much product I actually get in my other liquid blushes that I love. And you might be surprised. So I decided to pick the Rare Beauty liquid blush because this is my ride or die liquid blush. And, <laughs> 10.3 mil in the hourglass. We have 12 mil in the Armani, 7.5. The Armani is 36 pounds in the UK and the Rare Beauty is 22. So that's just something to bear in mind when you are choosing and thinking that it's absolutely extortionate to pay that amount for 12 mil, but actually you only get 7.5 in the Rare Beauty. Interesting. And I think one of the major differences, obviously, is the applicator. I do prefer a doe foot applicator. I mean, we're being picky, but this can be a little bit more inconvenient. So you have to dispense this onto something. However, I do think that this dropper is much more hygienic than what the Armani would be. So pros and cons. So I just want to come away from the performance of the blush and just mention very quickly something about the ingredients. I know that a lot of people want to know whether these blushes contain alcohol. And I can tell you that the Hourglass is free from alcohol, but the Armani does contain denatured alcohol. And I've also mentioned the skincare benefits of the hourglass, but it is also non-comedogenic, which I searched through the Armani and it did not claim to be. So that's again, something to bear in mind if you do struggle with breakouts specifically from makeup. And another point that I know people want to know, the hourglass is vegan, the Armani doesn't claim to be vegan. And I think we all know that hourglass is cruelty free, but the Armani does not claim to be cruelty free. In summary, I think that they are both very smoothing. They are beautiful formulas. They come in a similar amount of shades, a very, very similar price point, just a couple of pounds between them. And you do get a very similar amount of product as well. I think it really boils down to what your preference is in a blush. I think if you prefer more of a hydrated, super plumping blush, I think you cannot really go wrong with the hourglass. I mean, I have 
some breakouts here on my cheek at the minute, so you probably can't see how smooth this blush is. I really do think that my skin looks so healthy with this blush on. It's absolutely stunning. And again, just to reiterate, absolutely blends itself. It really does. And as for the Armani, this again is an absolutely flawless product. You don't need a lot of it. I think it is pigmented. I think for me personally, they both provide something different. Really, you couldn't go wrong with either, but hopefully just breaking down those similarities and differences, it might help you pick one way or the other. So there we go. That is my rundown of these two beautiful luxury liquid blushes. Do let me know which one is your favorite. Have you picked up either of these? Are you planning on doing? Has this helped? Please do let us know in the comments because it's really, really helpful, not just for me, but for everybody else reading it. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I so appreciate you being here. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next one. But until then, take care and bye for now.